The Golden Jubilee National Hospital is a state-of-the-art hospital equipped to provide excellent care for patients. The Department of Thoracic Surgery caters to the whole of Scotland and consists of five consultant thoracic surgeons. Hello and welcome to the Golden Jubilee National Hospital. My name is Alan Kirk and I'm one of the consultant chest surgeons working here down in Clydebank. Now for many of us, undergoing an operation, particularly a lung one, is a very new and challenging and worrying experience. We have made this film in order to let you share the experiences of one of our patients to allow you to understand what is expected of your patient journey. Now it's not all about just the operation itself. We want you to be in the peak of mental and physical condition to undergo this major operation and this will involve making a number of significant lifestyle changes. But at the end of the day, this is what we want to do in order to get you through this. Now there may be lots of questions that you may have and you're free at any stage in your journey to come and ask any of the staff about these. We hope that this film helps you uh, prepare yourself for this uh, big part of, of your life with having your lung operation and we would encourage you to watch it with your friends and family to help them support you through this difficult time. Thank you for taking the time to watch this film. Here, in the outpatient department, you will meet your surgeon who will go through your case and explain to you the options available for management of your condition. The surgeon will also explain to you the steps involved in the surgery, highlighting the risks and complications involved. You should use this opportunity to ask any questions related to the operation and discuss any worries you may have. You will also receive an information pack which has all of the advice and information that you will need to get fit and ready for your operation and to prepare for coming into hospital. If you have any questions about any appointments, you should contact our booking office. Before your operation, you will get a letter to come along to our pre-operative clinic. The clinic allows us to do all the necessary tests to assess your current health. This ensures that you are fit enough to have your operation. On the day of your clinic appointment, eat and drink as normal and take all of your normal medication. You should bring all of your medication with you in its original packaging. At clinic, you will see a nurse practitioner who will examine you and ask you questions about your health. They will take blood samples and start the paperwork that will follow you through your patient's journey. As well as getting blood taken, you may have an x-ray of your chest, lung function tests, a tracing of your heart and other scans that your surgeon may have asked for. The clinic usually takes around two to three hours and we try to do all the tests in the same day, but unfortunately some patients may have to come back another day if certain tests need to be repeated. Prior to your operation is a great time to try to make lifestyle changes that will help you to recover better after your operation and help you to lead a healthier lifestyle in the long run. Making healthy choices early on mean you'll have a more successful recovery after your operation. If you are active normally, keep up your normal routine. If you are well, get out and about. To help you improve your lifestyle and improve your health for your operation, you should think about things like stopping smoking. Your pharmacist or GP can give you advice on stopping smoking. This is important because smokers tend to have more secretions which can lead to chest infections and slow down your recovery. There are other healthy options such as cutting down on your alcohol consumption. Start eating more healthily and if you don't already, start to include walking into your daily routine. It's good to try to stay as healthy and fit as possible, but if you do feel unwell when you are waiting for your operation, the best person to see is your GP, as they will know the most about your overall health. Your family or friends can help support you in any lifestyle changes, so include them in helping you. It is important to talk to family and friends before your operation to have a plan of who will help you at home and bring you into hospital and take you home as you won't be able to drive. 
you will receive a patient information booklet that will explain the journey and give you good advice to get healthy before and after your operation. Bring this with you when you come in for your operation to help guide your recovery. Before your operation, you should keep active while you are waiting, unless you have been specifically told not to exercise. Keep up your exercise you do normally, for example swimming, golfing or cycling. You might find that you have to take more frequent rests or cut down the length of time you do this activity. This is normal. Keeping active will aid your recovery. Walking is a great form of exercise and is something everybody can build up slowly. Start walking regularly, slowly building up your stamina. Remember to take rests when you need them and stop if you feel unwell. From our experience, we know that the fitter people are before surgery, usually the quicker the recovery is after. We will send you a letter with the date of your admission to the hospital and the date of your operation. When you are getting ready to come in for your operation, you only need to bring the essentials with you. Please bring good fitting shoes or slippers for walking with the physiotherapist. A couple of pairs of pyjamas and a dressing gown and some toiletries. You don't need to pack any towels as they are available from the wards. Please bring all of your medication with you in its original packaging. Your family can bring more clothes when you need them. The day before your operation, you will be admitted to our thoracic surgical ward on level 3 West. Patients who live nearer the hospital may come in on the day of their surgery to our surgical day unit, also on level 3. When you come to the ward, you will be met by a member of the team who will show you to your room. All our rooms are single rooms with ensuite bathrooms. We will give you advice about preparing for your operation and answer any questions you may have. We will also ask you who you would like us to call after your operation to give an update on how you are doing. You can think about nominating one person who will feed back all the information to the rest of your family and friends. We will also check who is taking you home and who will help you after you are discharged home so this is all in place for you. Before your operation, your anaesthetist will come and see you on the ward to talk about the anaesthetic, your existing medical conditions, what medication you take and if you have any allergies. This information helps your anaesthetist plan the best care for you. Your anaesthetist may also prescribe a sedative to help you sleep the night before the operation. The anaesthetist will also advise when you should stop eating and drinking before your operation but your nurse will help you with this if you are unsure. On the day of your operation, your nurse will get you ready and let you know what time you are expected to go to theatre. You will shower and put a gown and stockings on. Sometimes the anaesthetist will prescribe a tablet called a pre-med which will make you feel relaxed and sleepy. Your nurse will give you your pre-med and keep you up to date with what is happening. When it is time for your operation, the theatre porter and the nurse will take you to the operating theatres. After your operation, you will be taken to the recovery area and you may still be a little sleepy from your anaesthetic and have an oxygen mask on. Brian? Brian? Hi there. That's your surgery over. You're in recovery. You will also have tubes in your chest to drain any fluid and smaller tubes in your hand or arm to give fluid and drugs through. You may have a small tube in your wrist through which your blood pressure will be monitored. A chest x-ray will also be performed here. When the nurses and doctors are happy that you are progressing well, you can have sips of water. Shortly afterwards, you will be transferred to our critical care area on level 3 or return to the ward.
Here, in the critical care area, all patients have their own rooms and one nurse will look after two patients. When you feel well enough, you will be offered something to eat and drink. Later that day or the following morning, the nurse might get you up to sit in the chair to start your physiotherapy. It's normal to expect some pain after your operation. We want you to be comfortable enough to be able to cough and deep breathe and to get up and sit. So if pain is stopping you doing this, tell a nurse who can give you some pain relief. The day of your operation, we would recommend only a couple of visitors come to see you. Visiting is between 1 and 8 in the evening. The morning after your operation, your nurses may assist you to get out of bed to sit in a chair. Later, your physiotherapist will come to see you to start your rehabilitation exercises. Morning Brian, my name is Katie, I'm Hi. one of the physiotherapists. Um, what I'd like to do this morning is have a listen into your chest and run through a breathing exercise for you to do two things, help keep the lungs expanding and make sure we're keeping the chest nice and clear. So first thing I'd like to do is just have a listen to your chest if that's okay. Yep. Okay, so I'd like you just to lean forward for me and uh -huh. just take some big breaths in and out through your mouth for me. Good. And I Just the other side. And just down the back now, okay. Big breath in. And out. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go through the breathing exercises. So the first part is taking nice deep breaths in through your nose, holding for three seconds and then letting out through your mouth. Okay, so take a nice deep breath in through your nose, same again, in through the nose, hold, two, three and out through the mouth. Good. And last one, in through the nose, two, three and out through the mouth. Good. So the next part of the exercise is what we call a huff. Uh -huh. So the way to explain this to you is it's the same action as if you were steam up a mirror. It's uh -huh. a... Okay, yeah. try that for me. Good. And finally, I'm going to do a supported cough. So I've got the towel wrapped around your back. Uh -huh. So if you take both yeah. ends, bring it in together and try a big cough for me. <coughs> and again. Okay, Brian, so what I'd like to do now is just go through some simple shoulder exercises with you to make sure we're keeping the shoulder range of movement and stop it stiffening up. Okay, yeah. so there's just three simple movements. The first one is bringing your arm right up to the ceiling. So you have a go for me. Good, and back down. Okay. And then we're taking the arm out to the side. Mm -hmm. As you can go. And back down. And the last one is bring your hand to the back of your head. Great. And back down. Forget to try three of each of them throughout the day. Many people have an increase in phlegm after the operation and as you are not as active as you normally are, you will not be breathing as deeply as you normally would and be clearing that phlegm. It's important to get rid of flame as it can build up and cause infections and breathing problems. The day after your operation, we may take out some of the drains you may no longer need. This helps to free you up to get on with your physiotherapy. You might be ready to go to the ward on this day. Some people have to stay a day or so more if they need a little more input to help them recover from their operation. We will start planning for you to go home four or five days after your operation. There is a walking route signposted in the ward to guide you in your recovery goals. Your physiotherapist will explain how much you should expect to achieve each day for your recovery. Each day your physiotherapist will visit you to give you daily walking goals and advise you on your breathing exercises. Usually by day three, most patients are working towards their walking goals and can continue on their breathing exercises by themselves. But if you need more chest physio, your physiotherapist will keep seeing you. 
If your physiotherapist is happy with your walking progress, our physiotherapy assistants will take you through the last part of your rehabilitation journey to get you ready for going home. If you are walking safely and independently around the wards, the last thing to do is stair practice. A discharge summary will be provided to you on the day you will go home. This document will contain details of your surgery, the post-operative course and also the list of medications you will need to take when you go home. You will be advised if you need to see your practice nurse for dressing changes or stitch removal. Our nurses will give you advice on what to expect when you go home. Your booklet will give you advice for continuing your recovery at home and getting back to fitness and on with your life. You may be seen by a nurse specialist in the ward or referred to one at your local hospital who can also give you advice for the next steps and support you through this stage of your journey. When you get home, it's normal for you to feel tired and it's important to rest in between doing your physiotherapy. But try to keep up with your physio and deep breathing at home to make sure you continue to improve your fitness and this will help to avoid developing any infections. If you have any questions, our staff on the ward are always there to answer any queries. Once discharged, you will then be followed up in your local clinic in four to six weeks where the results of your surgery will be discussed. Practicing your breathing and huffing exercise before you come in for your operation will help you improve your breathing and get you ready for your recovery. So the first part of the breathing exercise is taking the nice deep breaths in. So what I'd like you to do is take a nice deep breath in through your nose, hold it for three seconds and then let it out through your mouth, okay? So when you're ready, in through the nose, two, three and back out through the mouth. And again, two, three and out and one more two three and back out good okay i'd like you to try another three exactly like that okay uh -huh. so when you're ready same again big breath in okay. two three and out and again two three and back out and last one two, three, and back out. Excellent, good, okay. The second part of the exercise is what we call the huff. So mm -hmm. um, like I said to you this morning, it's exactly the same action as if you're steaming up a mirror or a pair of glasses to clean them. Uh -huh. You're trying a <sighs> okay, yeah. you try that for me. <coughs> Some more of a <sighs> Excellent, good, okay. And then if you take the towel, okay, just bring it up either side, grab both ends, Pull in to support the wound and try a big cough for me. <coughs> and again. <coughs> Excellent. Okay, so that's the whole exercise. Mm. And what I'd like you to be doing is continue that on your own every hour. Uh -huh. All right, yep. quite happy with that? Yes, uh -huh. Good. Yep. Again, it comes back to what the literature I was given beforehand, what I had to do, what I had to bring in with me. Um, yeah, I think I was organised for it. I knew what the surgery entailed by that point. I'd already met with the surgeon, it was explained. Um, clearly, like any surgery, you're not looking forward to it, but I understood what was going to happen. I knew the risk, but I also knew the chances of su successful, a positive outcome. And... I hate to say it, but I was kind of looking forward to getting it dealt with. I'd rather do it now. We know what's wrong. Go and deal with it. It's important this is done. And yeah, I felt prepared. I felt well informed when I came in. I've got to be honest, then, but I've been in and out of hospitals with family members being ill. Um, I thought this hospital was quite unique. I had my own room. But I thought the care was excellent. Um, I never had to wait for attention if I needed it, where I maybe was in pain and needed additional painkillers, anything like that. Um, 
everything was explained to me. I knew exactly what to expect and what the limitations were, what was expected of me in terms of sort of rehabilitation, the exercises I had to do and things. And I really can't, I was surprised and I certainly cannot fault the care. And I mean surprised in such a nice way that that's not what I expected to experience in hospital. And it made things so much easier. I felt reassured all the way through that I was getting looked after. When I got discharged, um, the, the medication was discussed with me, how much of it I had, what I had to do about um, replenishing stocks of that, um, the discussion I had to have with my GP. I had the information about physiotherapy, breathing, the things that I'd already been doing in hospital, but I was to continue them. There were other things around um, stocking, surgical stockings and things. Everything seemed to be before me, um, but my house was set up in a way that it was a relatively easy transition. I knew I could climb stairs and done it through the physiotherapy. My bedrooms are upstairs in the house, so I felt I was prepared. I, could, I knew that I could go home and I could look after myself, but I had provisions in for the first week just to make sure that um, if I was struggling, if I, I needed a hand with anything, there was someone about who could help me. So, yeah, I felt well prepared when I went home. One of the things that I did find which was very positive was um, my wife was obviously very anxious. She was in the house herself, I was in hospital. Um, I felt that people looked after her when she came to the hospital. People spoke to her, they gave her information, they made sure she was up to date. But again, if she phoned, they kept, it, they kept her up to date. If she phoned, she got questions answered and she felt included in my care, included in what was happening. And felt that she knew as much as me, I suppose, about it, rather than having to come up and check out what's been happening today and things. She, she always felt she was up to date and she was included in it and actually considered in the whole process of caring for me. From the point I was diagnosed and told that I needed surgery, things moved very quickly, um, which I'm clearly pleased about. I didn't want to wait, I didn't want to take a chance the situation would worsen. I was apprehensive, I've never spent time in hospital, I rarely visit a doctor, and suddenly I was facing this surgery. Thank you for watching this film, and we look forward to welcoming you here at the Golden Jubilee Hospital.